Well, hello, goody people. It's Kazi Game or Kazi. Ah, fuck it. Just call me whatever. But today I am coming to you with a Seven Deadly Sins review, or AKA known as Nanatsu no Kaizai. And yeah, I I have to say this. I love this chapter. Chapter 93 was so good, and so fun. The previous chapters have been getting better and better just by the second, and I am loving that. So yeah, uh, this chapter something quite surprising and really awesome just happened. Uh, basically, you know, last chapter we left off with Hendrickson getting smashed to the wall and then uncovering the corpse of the red demon behind it. You know, and it was like, I was like, fuck. I just kept thinking, like, that brought a lot of bad memories for Bond. Because he is seeing the demon that he fucking killed all those many years ago. And it it must have at least wrecked him a little bit because he lost somebody that he cared for a lot. Also, King lost his sister, which, you know, was the same person, but still, like, you know what I mean. It was, it, it, it must have been. And in this chapter, it shows how angry and frustrated Bond is because of it. Because basically, we start off with, uh, you know, everyone talking about the Red Demon and everything. You're like, they're surprised to see a creature of that magnitude and power just there. And it just feels so demonic and evil. And yeah, basically, Henderson is just giving a little bit of a speech. And like, eh, we, uh, thanks to uncovering this body and the uh, very forest i forgot how many years some years ago and yeah uh we uh, we obtained power to you know the power to count his experience and everything to create the new generation of all the knights and everything and yeah just you know, doubling in dark magic and all this other stuff it's really cool and i like how hendrix thing is just bragging around and like thanks to it i have gained this the power of the red demon and I'm so just unbeatable and unmatchable in any sense and after that he just basically sh attacks all the sins and everyone dodges except for Bond because basically he's immortal he gives no shit about being injured because he knows he's gonna regenerate from it just like that so it's not a big deal for him but basically we see everyone but yeah she just gets impaled those tentacle like things black tentacle like things that uh, Hendrickson shot and everything, and it and it just like has a leaps, one big asshole here. And I like how Bond just rushes into Hendrickson like like just cra like crazy, and then he immediately says, "Oh, so you uh you obtained the power of that red demon there? Then I guess you can't beat me." I love when Bond does that little singing thing because it's so funny and he it's kind of like a little bit sarcastic if you think about it. That's his attitude and his way of doing things. But it's, it, it's also very comical and everything. And after that, he just clobbers Henderson, smacks him just on the head, and makes him go through a fucking crater, a huge one. And it's just funny. Also, I like how he, he delivers a line in, in doing that action of attacking Henderson like that manner. That he basically says, And you, because I fucking killed that fat ass. That fucking fat ass. And it was hilarious. It, that that moment right there showed how much anger Bond had at the moment. He 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 greatly hates demons to a to a just because he just, just killed someone that he that he loved very much and everything. And yeah, but yeah, after that we have a little t that then everyone goes down the hole that Hendrickson just fell. That Bond just clubbed him, clubbed you know, just in in it. And everything and uh after that you have a little comedic bit right there for a little bit where everyone just like is in the darkness and they can't see anything and then uh uh then uh gather says bon are you picking your nose and then bon just goes like oh gather you can see in the darkness wow, that's cool and, and then king goes like fuck it these idiots you know and then he goes and uses his his sacred treasure and does another form that we haven't seen before which is luminous something you know luminous and he basically creates a light sphere and everything i like how meliodas says your sacred treasure is quite useful and well he's doing that he's dodging one of bond's you know, boogers that he shot at him and everything and i like that in this all this dark thing 
and it's occurring. We have like those little small comedic bits, and it's really good to have those because sometimes you need something to lighten the mood, and that was good. Uh, but yeah, uh, after that, uh, Bond goes, Candy, where are you? And that little singing voice that he does. I can't wait for the enemy to come on because the voice actor for Bonnie has to be so good. Also, when he never delivers those little singing lines, I am gonna just be like, BAM! Because I, I love. Bond's my favorite character. Second would be Meliodas and everything. Because he's just such a fun, great character and everything. And Greed, for some reason, in everything that I've seen of the character of Greed being portrayed in any sort of anime or anything that, I, that as I've watched, I've always liked and loved that character more than any other character in the show. I don't know, I think just the character of Greed in any anime or manga is always very well written. And so far, the ones that I've seen lately, and that is Greed from Full Metal Alchemist and Bond from Seven Different Tents. Or maybe there are others I just forgot, and also there that I have seen, but still, it's not whatever it is. The point right now, we're in the review section of this. But yeah, uh, and then Hendrickson reveals himself, he's like, I'm right here. Everyone is a little bit stuttered and not stuttered, uh, uh, a little bit on their guard because they feel this dark presence that's right behind, right in front of them and everything. And then Hendrickson reveals this gray demonic demon, uh, the corpse of one of the demonic creature that is far superior, far stronger than the red demon. And it just looks amazing. Like that demon is cool. But this all, that also brought to light another thing. It shows that there are different types of races of demons and clans of demons and all that sort of stuff. And it's cool. But I'm just wondering how how vast is this race or class of demons? Because we got uh we have a red demon, which we've already known about them for a while, and we have now gray demons. So how many other demons are there? Like five, you know, five different clans, races, all that, like five, ten, fifteen, twenty. They can't be like a bajillion. There can be a bajillion amount of demons, but there cannot be a bajillion amount of races, I would say. Because human beings are still human beings, even though one's black, one's Latino, one is, well, you know, Caucasian, one is Asian, you know, like, they're different races and everything of people, but they're not, like, on like, the bajillion amounts. Bajillion of people? Yeah. Bajillion of races? No. But still, uh, yeah. Uh, from that, Hendrickson takes one of the little, the little, gets a little syringe thing that he had, uh, and just had a little bit of the gray demon in him, in it, just put it in there, just injected himself, and he got a new transformation, new type of demonic form, and he's so amazing. But I want to point out something. I like how, when he did that, he went back to his original form, you know, the Hendrickson with the little, with the goatee and everything. And the short hair, because I like that version a lot more than the younger Hendrickson. I don't know, I just didn't quite like that young side of him that much. I was like, it's not, it, it looks cool, but your old version looked far more, you know, cooler. But I like how it goes back to that. I also noticed in the panels, his fucking biceps, they were buff as fuck when he was in his younger form, shrunk down a little bit and everything. And I was like, that's kind of interesting and cool. Yeah, uh, I love that, that line that he delivers if he transforms, that he says, this is, you know, he says, uh, this is what I wanted for the both of us, Dave and Dreyfus, and everything. And it goes to show that Henderson actually really cared a lot about Dreyfus, and he admired him and thought of him as a Conrad. But because they have diff they had different perspectives of what they want, and Hendrickson's goal was, was compromised in a sense, because of Hendrickson, he was a, a little bit of a blockade, and he had to go through him, even though it was a tough decision for him. It, it looked very simple when we saw it, but internally it must have been a tough choice to make, because he really cherished, cherished uh, Dreyfus as a brother, and he loved him a lot. And it's nice to see that side of him. Like some, a lot of times, the villains can't should be should be portrayed as this pure villains. They should be portrayed as a villain, and you can quite enjoy and kind of love a little bit or empathize with in a sense and I like that Hendrickson is that feeling so far we, we've been shown that side of his but yeah 
after Hendrickson transforms into his new demonic form, Bond rushes in to attack him, and basically, and basically, he gets blown up. His upper torn, his up, his torso just entirely is blown up, and to, at the bottom is of his legs is the only thing that's left. And I, I found that super amusing. But since he's immortal, I don't think that's gonna keep him down for long. I mean, we've already seen Meliodas chop him up in that same manner. He chopped up his body, he chopped him in two, and then he, I think he destroyed the upper part of his body. I can't recall very well, but I know he did that. And then the lower part just regrew the upper part again. So as long as, basically, uh, Bond is like Wolverine levels of immortality. As long as there's like a little bit of speck of blood or something, I think he can just immediately come back to life. But yeah, I also want to point out that Bond has a sweet ass six pack like that. It looks so cool. I always love seeing him shirtless because he looks so badass. And yeah, basically the chapter completed there and everything. And the last line that was delivered was uh, Meliodas saying that's no longer Hendrickson. Which is interesting because I want to see exactly, is he too far gone in a sense where to the demonic side that he no longer has his consciousness or is himself in that manner anymore? Or is he just beyond help? You know, like, but like beyond help as in he's not human anymore. Or that he, he just lost his mindset, and now the D, the great demon's mindset is taking over. And I, I just wonder which, which, which is it, which it is. But yeah, that's about it. Uh, this has been going on for a while. I don't want to make these videos way too long. I gotta learn how to cut this, but yeah, to you know, make it shorter and everything. But yeah, this is a great chapter. I enjoyed it. I can't wait for the next one. But with that said, I'll see you soon. Hopefully, something new.